It was in 1959. My father drove me up and dropped me off in front of Roger Williams Hall. You felt you were in another world. You know, you came from, I came from a factory town and all of a sudden you're on campus and the coaches are very professional and there weren't many people here. 400 men, 400 women. So it was a very small school. Bob Hatch came to the high school and he, and he was one of the few coaches that came. And I was recruited by other schools in New England, but, but he came to the school. Bob Hatch was a wonderful person. He, he was a great role model for all of us. Uh, he was honest, he was honorable. He would really go out of his way to help his players. <clears throat> so I remember when I started in, in trying to get into the coaching profession, uh, I was a senior. He says, why do you come to Boston with me? Uh, they got a clinic in Boston. You get a chance to hear these coaches talk. So he brought me to Boston with him. So I could go, I went to my first clinic. But to be a center linebacker it was kind of a, position of notoriety. In those days, that was a big position. Uh, so all the people who made All-American, uh, you know, the Dick Buckteses were centers and linebackers. Maxi Blom was center and linebacker. And they used to rate us every week. We'd have, in the Boston papers, we would have a rating of the players and how they played the game. So they would have the quarterback listed from all the different teams in New England. Who was the best in? Who was the best center linebacker? So it was a a position that uh, you get a lot of attention. And being a captain, uh, that's right, that, to be captain of your team, chosen by your teammates, no greater thing can happen to, to people. And we were tough. I, I, people have told me, and, uh, coaches at Maine at that time, and uh, the trainers at Bowdoin, and year in and year out, the base was the most physically demanding team they had to play every year. So we had classes six days a week. So up until my sophomore year, we had classes on Saturday morning before we went out to play a football game. And <clears throat> people find that hard to believe, but that's what we did. But we didn't have a lot of extra stuff. You'd come over and go to practice, finish practice, go to the dining. There were no night meetings. There was no afternoon meetings. There was no weight training. It was pretty much in a block of time. You know what I mean? And it was a, it was a time limit on it all. So we would finish when the sun went down but it was probably two hour practices. It was single platoon football too. So we never left the field. It wasn't two platoon, it was single platoon because of the rules. So when you went out to play a game, you when you get on the field, you never went back to the bench the whole game. So it wasn't the wide open style of football you have now, it was pretty compact formations and, uh, and a lot of muddy, snowy games, uh, tough games. I didn't plan on playing baseball because I, I had a so-so. I played on great teams in Massachusetts, but I didn't think I was that good a hitter. And the first batting practice I went out to, I said, uh, do you want me to bunt? And Chick said to me, you're not gonna bunt for four years. I never did. And I started for four years. I played every inning of every game for four years. And he taught me how to hit. And I had never hit a home run before. And I think the first year I had three of them. He really developed me as a player. We were voted the best team in New England. Um, and we had some very good teams. We won two state titles. But Chick was a wonderful person and uh, he was beloved. But Hatch and Leahy set the groundwork for me and how to be a coach. They, they were the people that set the example of how to do it. Uh, the academics prevailed. And we all received a classic liberal arts education. And we all had to take courses that were determined by the faculty. We had to take three sciences. They were not uh, sciences for preppies. These were courses you know, that, that all the pre-med people were taking too. So you were in a classroom with people fighting to get into medical school <clears throat> and you were a history major. But the education we received, every one of us will say when we get together, thank God we had that great education.